a well-maintained drive can be the difference between getting a full 15 to 20 year life cycle out of a drive, which is, I would say, the typical industry standard versus having some sort of unplanned shutdown or failure simply because you weren't able to have those regular checkpoints. Hello and welcome to the Pumps and Systems podcast. I am your host, Tom Baer, a managing editor at Pumps and Systems Magazine. Today, we're going to be speaking with Kyle Harrison and Chico Janiskevich from Eaton. They're going to be telling us about medium voltage drives, synchronous transfer systems, maintenance and safety, and a ton of other interesting topics. So definitely stick around to hear what they have to say. And if you're listening to this podcast and would like the chance to watch it instead, head on over to the Pumps and Systems YouTube channel to see the full video version. And while you're there, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And with that, let's get right into the episode. All right. Well, welcome. And thank you so much for being on the Pumps and Systems podcast. So how, how are you both doing today? Good. Good to be here, Tom. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, uh, pumps and, and pump systems. Looking forward to it. All right. Good. That's a good, good place to start. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. So uh, why don't we start off with just, if you guys wouldn't mind kind of introducing yourselves and telling us who you are and what you're going to be talking to us about today. Absolutely. So just to start off with, I'm Kyle Harrison. I'm the product manager for uh, Eaton's medium voltage control assemblies, which includes amp guard, medium voltage control, as well as our SC9000 medium voltage drives. Chico? Yep. Uh, my name is Chico Janiskevich. Uh, I work for the same product line with Kyle, uh, but more specifically on medium voltage drives. I'm a sales specialist for Eaton Corporation and, and a facility up in Asheville. All right. Great. Okay. And so today, speaking of medium voltage drives, you're going to be talking to us a bit about that today, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. On that subject, could you tell us something about medium voltage drives. Like what are they? How do they relate to pumps in industrial applications, things like that? Sure. So medium voltage drives at their core, they're used to control the speed and torque of medium voltage electric motors. Um, So this allows for efficient and adjustable operation of the motors in various applications, um, including all sorts of uh, process control in terms of uh, precise flow rates based on demand. And it can add a lot of value to pumps and pump systems in particular because of that. So if you think about it in relation to uh, medium voltage motor control center, um, things like across the line motor starters or even reduced voltage soft starters, Drives are novel in their ability to control motors throughout not only the start stop cycle, but also the run cycle. And that's what really translates to that efficiency and energy savings. So then uh, next, why don't we talk a little about how medium voltage drives kind of contribute to the efficiency and performance of pumps in different industrial settings? Sure. So just from the the most basic standpoint, what a what a drive is allowing you to do is have precise control of a pump okay so you know when an across the line uh it, uh is used on a pump it's it's either on at full speed or it's off at full speed right with with a drive you can vary that from you know zero percent all the way up to 100 percent, and it just really depends on need okay um so that that's kind of the most basic uh in addition and Kyle kind of reversed, uh, referred to it um, on that startup, you know, you're going to have in any kind of motor, which is going to be, you know, uh, running a pump, you're going to have this locked rotor, right? Because you've got this mass that you got to start moving. Um, and that generally will take just a, a real large uh, increase or hit of current to do so. Uh, with a medium voltage drive, you could do what's called a soft start, essentially, and just, and just kind of slowly ramp that motor spinning without having to have a six time current or eight time current draw, something like that. You can, you can reduce that and spread it over a little bit of time. And in that way, kind of ease it on your system. Yep. And just to piggyback off that a little bit, you know, you also have uh, soft stop capabilities, right. To reduce things like a water hot hammer effect on um, valves. 
So uh, what what should people be kind of considering or thinking about when it comes to selecting the right medium voltage drive for a particular pump application? Size being one primarily, right? You know, how, how big is the actual motor that you're looking at? Um, what kind of uh, torque characteristics are required, right? Because when you're looking at that a drive, it's going to be configured uh, for specific overloads. And so when we talk about a variable torque versus a constant torque. So for example, uh, what most people think of real simply as pumps, like a rotodynamic one, which is going to, you know, used in irrigation, drainage, things like that. And essentially it's a shaft that has a rotor. And so it controls the volume of fluid that's going through it um, with the speed of that. So that that would be ideal for like a variable torque drive. On the other hand, if you have like a positive displacement pump where you've got a set amount of volume uh, that has to get moved at every cycle, uh, that's a, that could be a lot of force. That's typically used in, in uh, applications with uh, fluids that have high viscosities, resins, paints, things like that, sludge. Uh, and so you need to have a, a, that constant torque pushing that force, pushing that through on every single cycle of that, uh, of that pump itself. Right. So those are some of the basic considerations. And then of course, looking at voltage, uh, footprint, you know, if, if you're retrofitting, uh, what's going to work in your space or just simply if it's a new design, trying to save, uh, footprint costs, uh, things like that, um, material cost for installation and labor. Those are all different factors that you're going to look at for selecting a drive that's going to work for your application. Quick consideration with that as well. Let's say that feels like an overwhelming amount of information. You know, one thing that is always handy as a starting point is if you have an existing motor or a newly acquired motor, taking a picture of that motor nameplate and sending it to a vendor goes a long way. And that can help in assisting all of those types of considerations. All right. So next, uh, let's talk a little about synchronous transfer systems. So they're often mentioned alongside medium voltage drives. So could you tell us a little about kind of their role and their benefits, especially as they relate to pump systems? Medium voltage drive synchronous transfer systems. Synchronous transfer is really the ability to use one drive to control multiple motors in series. And just a brief example of that, let's say you have a, a pump system and, and it's comprised of three pumps, right? The horsepower ratings can be different or be the same. So for the purpose of ex this example, let's say you've got, you know, one pump that's 1000 horsepower, one pump that's 1500 horsepower and another pump that's 2500 horsepower. And you say, okay, I'm really liking what I'm hearing about medium voltage drives. I know I want some uh, efficiency gains. I know I want some energy savings. And so I wanna put drives on all of these pumps. That is a perfectly reasonable um, option. You can have individual drives controlling each one of those pumps. But if you have an application where you're already running those pumps in series, meaning bringing one pump online at a time and bringing one pump offline at a time, what you can do instead of having three individual medium voltage drives is just have one drive and integrate that together with a medium voltage motor control center to form a synchronous transfer system. And what that allows you to do is basically select the pump that you want to control with the drive and be able to ramp that up based on variable demand. So in this same scenario, you'd have pump number one and that drive can assume con full control of that pump. It can gradually ramp it up and down as a result of fluctuating demand and ensuring a proper flow rate. And once you reach peak demand on pump number one and you're running at full load, full speed, that drive can actually transfer across the line to the motor control center that basically runs as a bypass starter. And that frees up the drive to then assume control of the next pump in series, which would be pump number two. And the drive can operate the exact same way. Co complete speed control over pump number two until you reach a point where you have full load, full speed, and again, can a transfer across the line and bring pump number three online. 
and it can ramp down the same way in series. So at, at its core, a synchronous transfer system is a capital efficiency play that allows you to have the type of control of uh, medium voltage drives on all of your pumps with the capital spend of just a single medium voltage drive with adjacent motor control centers, which also ends up being a lot less cost and a lot less footprint. Wow. Yeah, that sounds super convenient. Um, and, and certainly, I mean, a, a huge use case there when we're talking pumps and systems is, is wastewater treatment centers because they're almost constantly um, have those use cases of running in series. So how, how do medium voltage drives and synchronous transfer systems integrate with modern pump control systems and automation technologies? Very readily. Um, you know, it, 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 as far as from a um, starter or mechanical standpoint, you know, typically you're looking at a manufacturer to provide that, right? You're, you, it, could, it could run the gamut of having a drive that is going to be hard bus to starters, uh, like the bypass starters that, that Kyle was referring to uh, with the motor select on there. And so it's just one continuous lineup. Um, manufacturers will use cabling, so they'll have a drive separate with that sync transfer control and be able to cable to um, breakers or contactors that then feed the motors and then provide that kind of control. Uh, in addition, communication. Uh, you know, we see more and more in that uh, building management systems as being key. Uh, and so, you know, having having whether that's an Ethernet capability, um, different protocols like you'll hear of uh, Modbus, TCP or, or serial uh, device net, Ethernet, IP, things like that. Um, those are all means to kind of to to have this working within a system where there might be a, a central point of command, so to speak. That's monitoring all those, uh, all that communication and determining, you know, what motor, what pump has to start, how does it have to start, sending the command of the drive. Um, we will see, you know, in, in drive manufacturers, it's not uncommon that, you know, you, ideally you get a schematic and you're looking at that and you're looking at valve control, you're looking at uh, pressure uh, sensors, things like that, and all those kinds of things would be incorporated into uh, the, to the that whole kind of control consideration that the, that the drive is looking at, that the starters themselves are looking at, and the building management system itself is taken into account. And uh, so what's, what maintenance practices should operators follow if they want to, you know, kind of maximize the lifespan or like ensure the longevity of their medium voltage drives and synchronous transfer systems in pump applications? To start off with, there is uh, recommended maintenance plans and maintenance cycles uh, that will come from the manufacturer as a re recommendation within uh, an instruction booklet or instruction manual. And that's always the best place to start because medium voltage drives can vary from vendor to vendor in terms of uh, not only specific vendor considerations, but also within the inherent topology or core design of that drive itself. So that would always be, I would say, a, a great starting point to take place. And what you will typically see within those instruction booklets is some sort of regular cadence of inspection. And that's usually biannually or annually, um, as well as um, replacements for um, filters or cleaning of filters. Um, so for our, our drive specifically, it's, it's cleaning those filters, um, taking a look at things like the inverter section of the drive, which is um, within any drive, typically the most temperamental portion of a drive sim simply because it's doing all the heavy lifting of um, uh, firing controlled pulses of uh, your output. Uh, power. And likewise, um, in addition to following those recommended maintenance practices, once you have a drive up and running, installed, and you've inspected it a certain number of times, you can start to gauge what is the best sort of maintenance and inspection cycle based on your environment. 
And that can also play a pretty big factor. So let's say if you have a lot of dust and debris in the install location, that's going to be something that you want to take into account as a consideration within your maintenance and inspection plan. If you have a perfectly clean room, no corrosive elements, no signs of debris, you're probably in a position after an inspection or two, if you're not seeing any sort of debris form, you can, you can probably take a step back from um, some closer inspection cycles. But um, either way, it is certainly recommended to have a pulse on uh, how your drive is performing, as well as a gauge of how much debris is really being collected within that drive. That can be the difference between um, a well-maintained drive can be the difference between getting a full 15 to 20 year life cycle out of a drive, which is, I would say, the typical industry standard versus having some sort of unplanned shutdown or failure simply because you didn't you weren't able to have those regular checkpoints. So maintenance, very, very important is what I'm hearing. Of course. Yes. Yes, exactly right. And um Depending on how many drives uh, an end customer has been exposed to, they may have an entire team that's well versed in in maintaining these drives, or they may say, you know, medium voltage. We don't work with it, with it often. We don't want to be operating on it. And there are specialists with every organization that are are there for the sole purpose of service and maintainability, and that is another great option to take into consideration. All right, so the next, uh, let's talk a little about safety in industrial settings. So how are medium voltage drives and synchronous transfer systems designed to meet safety standards and protect personnel and equipment? Um, obviously, it's, it's a really um, big direction that we're seeing a lot of facilities going into, focusing on safety and not just for uh, equipment, but personnel as well. Um, generally in a drive, you know, you're going to have a means to isolate that device. So, you know, just from a, um, from a kind of flow standpoint, uh, a drive is going to consist of a, um, is going to have some disconnect, um, that will, you know, isolate that. There's going to be an isolation transformer that's taking that incoming voltage. It's converting it, uh, to a DC, uh, to an AC that's a DC voltage where you're going to have your inverters that Kyle referenced and then downstream filtering. So, from, from a safety perspective, just being able to completely isolate uh, so that a technician, if they do need to go in and do any kind of maintenance, that's the first thing that you'll see, right? You'll see a lot of that. Um, uh, and, and then continuing as far as personnel safety, uh, there is more of a trend to see arc resistant equipment. So the idea of uh, an arc event, uh, which is an event where you might have basically um, current going between say two phases, via air right and generally what you're going to have is a significant amount of energy release and so we're seeing trends in the industry where more and more customers are demanding not only means to either uh, prevent that from occurring but also if it does occur uh, how do you mitigate that um, that kind of energy that's released because we're talking about temperatures of 30,000 Fahrenheit plus right in in that kind of event so uh, there's there's sensors that are called arc flash sensors that are literally that they are light they are photon sensors that are looking for light and then when they see that they're going to disconnect that upstream from the from the drive and then that way any possible arc events um, gone away uh, when i mention arc resistant equipment we're talking about uh, the designs in the gear that include plenums um, and arc exhaust duct then if, if that if event occurs all those toxic fumes, all that energy gets pushed away from a technician standing in front of the equipment. Right? Uh, as far as equipment safety, all drives are inherently there to protect the load, right? They're, they're kind of protecting themselves, but they're also protecting the load. So it goes as simple from using protection relays that you might see on across the line starters, um, not necessarily required by all manufacturers because inherently they're gonna have a control device that's monitoring overload protection as the most basic just making sure what how much current is being pulled by this this motor this pump um, is it exceeding what it should uh, you'll have uh, heat sensors in 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 um, the motor itself RTDs they're going to monitor temperature there and decide okay hey we're we're getting a little hot uh, all the way up to over voltage and under voltage conditions are things that um, you'll see in in either the the drive control itself or with additional relays and components there 
to monitor. So uh, seeing a lot of that um, is pretty common in most drive designs. And what advice would you give to any professionals in the pump industry who are thinking about maybe adopting medium voltage drives and synchronous transfer systems for their pump systems? I would say that first and foremost, uh, drives are an energy efficiency play. And with that in mind, um, something like a system study is a great uh, starting point at least for consideration. If you already understand your system well, you should be able to get to a point where you can realistically understand what sort of return on investment you get out of a medium voltage drive. Um, That is part a big part of the purchasing decision because drives are, um, if you're going from something like an across the line starter or reduced voltage starter, drives are larger in footprint, generally speaking, and they're more costly, generally speaking. But that impact that you get all comes from a return on investment as part of that energy efficiency and really the longevity of all your downstream equipment, both the motor and the pump. Um, So that's, a, I would say, an important factor. Um, Getting the ratings right is essential. And if you're ever unsure about rating, refer back to that, that motor nameplate. and and send that directly to the vendors that you're looking to seek quotations with and solutions with. The last thing is that there are a lot of industry experts to lean on, right? You don't have to be an expert in a drive. Um, If you understand the value of it and you want it it, as a part of your system, there are um, various resources from guide specs available online, um, application engineers to help with the assistance of Uh, creating initial schemes and plans and and overall one-line diagrams. Um, There are product line application engineers to assist with the project life cycle of it. And for startup and commissioning, there is um, service and support engineers that specialize in in medium voltage drives. So um, don't get hung up on all of the technical um, factors if you can if you can get to a point where you see the value in it, there are support means available. And if you feel comfortable taking on some or all of that work yourself, um, you can be in an even better position to uh, validate and uh, get to the point of having a really successful project. Yeah, and to, and to build on that, and Kyle had mentioned it, you know, this, this idea of looking at it, um, the initial cost, right of purchasing a drive compared to say other uh, across the line or um, less complex devices to run motors um you, you kind of have to look at the big picture right uh while that cost might be big up front over a five-year period or a 10-year period you, you you will see savings right and so from a large from a larger picture you're going to see a lot of cost savings utilities uh, are more and more um, pushing back um additional charges on on wasted power, right? Motors are notorious for that. And so keep in mind that there are so many different drives with so many different features out there that uh, there are means to deal with that, that you can actually help save money and and help minimize what kind of lost power that a utility is going to see just based on the selection of a drive. So it's just keeping that idea uh, in, in as a focus, is that this isn't a short term solution generally, um, well, not to say that you won't see an immediate result when you put in the drive, but yeah, look at it as a bigger picture. And then again, to Kyle's point, there's so many resources out there. There's so many, uh, folks out there that are willing to help and get you information that just start digging, just start asking questions. That's the first step. Okay. So looking at it as kind of an investment in, in your future. Exactly right, Tom. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Well, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers about this subject? Chico, um, any final points? Any final points? Um, no, I mean, I, I think we kind of covered most everything. Uh, we we looked at, we talked about application. We talked about kind of looking at your system. Um, I, I think with the direction that it seems most industries are going kind of trying to be more green more efficient um i definitely think it's 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 worth even even a system right now that that you know you're you're looking at your pump system you're looking at your facility and you think everything's working fine uh it's never too early 
to start considering what's the next step, right? So uh, just keeping an open mind in that regard, I think is going to be important. Great point, Chico. And uh, I don't really, I, I, I agree with uh, Chico's take. I think we covered a lot of good ground, um, but just a quick recap on, I guess, a few prevalent points. Uh, media voltage drives can be used in applications where complete speed control is required, energy savings is a goal, or where complex process operations is a need. Um, synchronous transfer is a great solution in applications where you have pumps that are running in series, and it is required that those pumps run in series in order to uh, have synchronous transfer as a viable solution. And uh, Again, there's support resources where you need it. Um, leverage those resources, including um, a lot of uh, tips and guidance online uh, that we have, that other vendors have. Um, and I think that's an excellent starting point. All right. So these are these are our final thoughts. That's a, that's everything I got. Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then, thank you so much to both of you for being kind enough to you know, come on the podcast and share your expertise with us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, Tom. Uh, we're happy to be here. And uh, hopefully we got some uh, good uh, insights for the listeners out there. And um, if you ever need anything, you can always reach out. We yep. absolutely Agreed. will. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Tom. Yeah, sure thing. And I think we definitely had some good insights today that everyone will really enjoy listening to. Huge thanks to Kyle Harrison and Chico Janiskevich for talking with us today and teaching us all about medium voltage drives. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future podcast episodes. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for listening or watching if you're over on our YouTube channel and we'll see you again next time.